Integrated Math 3. This is the test review for your Unit 4 test. The test has been posted on Canvas. It's under Unit 4. It's down at the bottom. So you can actually access the test right now. What I'm going to do is go over some problems that are identical to the type that you have to do on the test. So number one on this uh, test review will match up with number one on the test. Number two will match up with number two. You do them the same way uh, as you do the problems on the test review, but there's going to be different numbers, maybe slightly different wording. So the idea is to learn how to do the problem and then do it on the test. So here's the test. Uh, it was assigned Wednesday. It went up yesterday afternoon at five o'clock. It's due Saturday afternoon at five o'clock. So you have three full days to do it. Uh, by the time you see this video, it'll be more like uh, two days or two and a half days. So you have plenty of time. So go ahead and get that done. Please uh, be sure to turn this in. It's worth um, a lot of points. I believe two to 300 points. And uh, you wanna be sure this gets turned in, okay? So let's go ahead and get started with the test review. So I'm gonna write out a problem that's similar in nature to number one on the test, okay? All right, so problems one and two both relate to a formula that I had not given you. So you're learning something new, but it's pretty easy to apply this formula. And it has to do with growth by percentages, by, ex by exponential rates. Um, so this problem deals with decay. That means something's getting smaller by an exponential rate. It's really not that hard when you see the formula. So a radioactive element decays. The radioactive elements in chemistry are elements that fall apart. You may have heard like uranium or carbon-14 are radioactive. They fall apart. They just kind of dissolve. You can think of them as just dissolving naturally. They go away. So a radioactive element decays at a rate of 25% per day. So 25% is one-fourth. So after one day, one-fourth of it has gone away. After another day, one-fourth of what's left after the first day goes away. After two days, one-fourth of what's left after the second day goes away. So 25% of whatever is remaining goes away each day. Originally, there are 600 grams of the element. How much remains after six days? How many grams of the element remains after six days? So let me show you the formula, and I'm going to show you how this process works in class. If you're in, if you're in period if you're in period one, you already saw this. If you're in period three, you're going to see it in class. But the formula is very simple. A is just stands for amount. It's the amount that you have left. Equals A zero. That, that subscript zero, when you see it in science, means what you had at the beginning. It's the initial amount, the beginning amount. So A zero is what you have at the beginning. Then what you do is you multiply that by one plus or minus, and I'll explain that in a minute, the percentage of either the growth or the decay. And you raise that to the n power. n is how many periods. In this case, the period is a day. In another problem, it might be a year. It's basically the time period that you're talking about, okay? So let me define those terms. Okay, so there it is, what I just described. A is the final amount, A0 is the beginning amount, percentage is the percent of growth or loss. It depends on what the problem's asking for. This problem, for example, it's a loss. It's losing a certain amount each day. <clears throat> and N is the number of time periods. That would be days, weeks, months, years. It could be whatever, it's a period of time. Okay, so we just plug in the numbers uh, as you see them up above. So A equals the amount we're gonna end up at the end of six days equals a zero. So we started with 600 grams. Don't worry about the unit of measure grams, just write the number 600. You're going to get an answer in grams. <clears throat> okay, and then the formula says one. In this case, it's decaying, it's going away. So we're going to use a minus and 25%. So let's come over here. What does 25% mean? Be sure you understand what a percent means. 25%, the word cent means 100. So that equals 25 per 100 
And if you did this calc do this calculation on a calculator, you end up with 0 0.25. So that's, you can't just put a number 25 in there. It's got to be 0.25. You have to convert the percentage to a decimal. So I'm going to put that here, 0 0.25. And it says six days, so that's our time period. So we're going to put a six there. Okay, so be careful how you calculate this. First, do this subtraction. One minus 0.25 is going to be 0.75. Then you take that number and you raise it to the sixth power. <clears throat> so I'm going to do this on the calculator. Once you've done that, you multiply by 600 and you'll have your answer. So let me do that on the calculator for you here. So it's going to be... here. Okay, so it's going to be 1 minus 0.25 equals, and that's 0.75. And now I'm going to raise that to the sixth power. I use the little carrot here, the little hat right there, that, that thing. There you see it on the screen. And I'm going to raise that to the sixth power, and that equals 0.17797, 7, all that. And now I'm going to multiply that by 600, the original amount. and I get 106.8, we'll call it. So the answer is simply 106.8. Now that's not how much decay, let me get this in focus here and get on screen. This is not how much decay, that's how much is left. So 600 went down to 106 after six days, okay? Okay, and that's your final answer right there. And so that's your final answer right there. Okay, we'll go on to number two. Okay, so here's problem number two. A college grad accepts a job at Google at a salary of $40,000 per year. When you take a job, if, you're, if what you're gonna get paid is quoted as per year, that's called a salary. So it's how much you're gonna make per year. If you get a job at McDonald's and they tell you you're gonna make $11 per hour, that's referred to as a wage. You're getting a wage of $11 per hour. So if it's, if it's quoted to you per year, that's called a salary. Um, if the grad, that should be the grad, receives <clears throat> an increase of 4% per year, what will be the salary after five years? Okay, so <clears throat> we're looking at the formula again, the same formula. This time, however, we're going to add the percentage, not subtract as we did because it's increasing. So I'll just put the percentage sign there, and it's raised to the N. So let's identify our variables. Our A0 here, let me do it over here. A0, beginning salary is 40,000. <clears throat> Percentage increase is gonna be 4%. And if we do the same kind of division, four divided by 100, we get 0 0.04. Four. Just do that on the calculator. 4 divided by 100, that's what 4% means, is 0.04. So that's the number you're going to use in the problem. And finally, the end, the, nu the number of periods, in this case it's years, not days, it's going to be 5. So whatever the problem tells you that the time interval is, it's going to be 5. So what we're going to end up with in here is A equals, okay, and you just solve that. So first of all, you add the one point and the 0 0.04, then you raise that to the fifth power, then you multiply by 40,000. 40, so we'll do that, put that on screen, one plus 0 0.04. You don't have to put the leading zero in front when you add that. That's gonna equal 1.04. And then we're gonna raise that with the little carrot right here, the little hat right there. And that's gonna be to the um, fifth power and we hit equals and we get that number and now we multiply that by 40,000. And that's $48,666, okay? Okay, so the salary will be 48,000. Let me get that in focus there. The salary will be $48,666 in five years. All right, let's move on to number three. 
Okay, now we're on to number three, and you're given a table of values, of input values that you put into a function x, and those would be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and output values that you'll get from that function. So I'm going to give you, um, tell you what the function looks like in general, and then you figure out what the uh, actual function is for these specific numbers. So since we're dealing with exponentials, what it's going to be is y equals some number a, you think of that as a coefficient, times another number b raised to the x power. So only b is raised to the x power, not a. And that's what you're going to get. So to come up with the equation for these specific numbers, um, that, that's what the question is asking you to do. So you, you need to know that, okay? You need to know that it's going to look something like that. So the way we did, we've done these before, the way we did this is we used the numbers 0 and 1. Because you know certain things about this equation if the x is 0 or 1. So <clears throat> let's start with 0 and that's going to help us to figure out what a is. That's going to allow us to figure out what a is. So I'm going to write this y equals a b to the 0 power. Well, b to the 0 power, any number to the 0 power is 1. So that means y equals, oh, and I'm sorry, I'm plugging in the numbers themselves, so I should have used the number negative 2 for y. If we know that, if we, we say that a is going to be 0, <clears throat> then y is going to be negative 2. So we can go ahead and replace y as well. Negative 2, negative 2. So that's a and b to the 0, this equals 1. Anything raised to the 0 power equals 1. So we know that a times 1 equals negative 2, so that means a equals negative 2. So we figured out what a is. So let's rewrite the equation with that in it. y equals negative 2 times b to the x. Now let's plug in 1 to figure out what b is. So y, and if, sorry, again, if I know 1, then I know, excuse me, if I know x is 1, then I know that y is negative 6, okay? So it's negative 6 equals negative 2 times b to the first power, because <clears throat> x equals 1 in this case. Well, b to the first power is just b. So it's going to be negative 6 equals negative 2 times b. Divide both sides by negative 2, and this one cancels out. Divide this side by negative 2. Negative 6 over negative 2 equals 3, so b equals 3. So we figured out a, we figured out b, so that's not the end of the problem. The last step is write that as an equation like this for this. So y equals a, negative 2, times b, 3, raised to the x power. And you can go to one of the other numbers that you didn't use, you use 0 and 1, go to one of the others and test it out. So let's do 2 and 18. If we put 2 in for x, we should get 18. So 2, so 3 to the 2 power, that's 3 squared is 9. 9 times negative 2 is negative 18. So that in fact works, okay? And you would find the same thing would work for those two. But the answer they're looking for is that. That's the function that describes those points, okay? So remember, no matter what the numbers are in this particular problem, it's not for every problem you could ever get like this, but for this unit, since we're dealing with exponentials, you're going to start off with that equation and figure out what a and b are, okay? All right, question four. It gives you a function. It says identify the domain and the range. Domain is what values that x can take on. So you want to look for things that x cannot be. Remember we talked about excluded values back a few weeks. Um, are there any values that are excluded for x? And then range. What values can y take on? And in this case, y is f of x. Okay, so y, f of x are the same thing. The reason we use f of x is we might have a different function, g of x, a different function, h of x. We might have more than one function, in which case you can't call all of them y because they're not all going to be the same. Value. So that's why they use that term f of x. It means when you plug in x, what do you get out of the function? Okay, the, only, the way to do this is by using a t-table. So let's go ahead and draw one of those.
okay, so this is the value of x, this is the value of f of x. And again, I like to draw these with a middle area like that where you can just write the actual function in. And the values I always like to use at the beginning, if there's not a vertical asymptote like there was back when we were doing rationals, where you kind of want to pick points to both sides of that, we don't have any such asymptote here, so it's going to be, I just do five values, starting with negative two and going forward to positive two. All right, so we'll go ahead and plug this in, each of these. So this is going to be two to the one over three, negative two, minus five. So what do you what does this mean one third to the negative two the negative sign means you immediately flip it over before you do anything else take the reciprocal so one over three becomes three it becomes three over one which is just three and then that's three raised to the second power positive second power so negative sign means you flip this over and then rate and then use the positive exponent the negative sign goes away once you've done that so it's going to be three raised to the second power that's going to equal nine 9 times 2 is 18, and 18 minus 5 is 13. So this is going to be 13. Next one, we're going to do this with negative 1. So again, do the exponent first. The negative sign means you flip it over and make it 3. 3 to the positive 1 is just 3. 3 times 2 is 6. 6 minus 5 is 1. Okay, 0. Anything raised to the zero power is going to be one, so that's going to be one. Two, time, two times one is two, minus five is negative three. Now we're going to go to one. Okay, so this one is a positive exponent, so you don't flip it. It's just one-third to the first power is one-third. Anything raised to the first power is just itself. So it's one-third. One-third times two is two-thirds. Two-thirds minus five is going to be negative four and one-third. I'm going to go ahead and write that as a decimal. You could do that on a calculator. You don't have to do it in your head. That's 4.33. That's negative four and a third. How about this squared? Okay, so two. squared minus 5. Okay, so 1 third squared is 1 ninth. 1 ninth times 2 is 2 ninths. And 2 ninths, I'm going to do that on a calculator here. I'll show you how I would do that. And you can use fractions if you want. I just like decimals. I'm more used to them. So 2 divided by 9 equals, it's an ugly decimal number, it's 0.22222 forever. And then you're going to take the 2 ninths here and subtract 5 from it. So minus 5, and it gives us negative 4.77. Okay, so what I see up here is these numbers, if you go in the negative direction, start with 0, and you go in the negative direction, you're getting into positive numbers and then even a really pretty big number up here. As you go from 0 in the negative direction, you go to negative 4.33 and the negative 4.77. Those two numbers are not very far apart from each other. So it tends to lead me to believe that in this direction, going from zero in the negative direction, so you're going in the negative direction for x, the numbers are gonna get bigger and bigger. They're gonna go towards infinity. Whereas down here, as you go from zero down here, they're getting very close to some number that's right around negative 5, okay? Uh, maybe it's negative 4.8, maybe it's somewhere negative 5, but if you can see how these two numbers got very close. So what do you do with that? What I do is I stick in a number that's much more negative than negative 2. I'm going to do negative 10 here, okay? So I'm going to come over here and do this formula with negative 10. I'm going to jump to a negative number, in other words, it's way more negative than negative 2, and see what happens over here. All right, so that's going to be 2 times 1 third 
to the negative 10 minus 5. And that's going to be some number that would go way up here over here, okay? So let's do that. So 1 third to the negative 10, you flip the 1 third and make it 3. Now it becomes 3 raised to the 10 power. That's going to be a really big number. I'm actually, I'll actually do that on the calculator. 3 raised to the 10 power equals really big number, 59,000 and something, okay? And then you multiply that by 2 and you subtract 5. And I get 118,000, okay? So it's a really, I'm just going to write really big number right here, big, okay? In other words, this is heading towards infinity. But what about this? What if we went from 2 to positive 10 down here? So now what we're going to have over here is 2 to the 1 third, and um, that's going to be to the 10th power. So that means we don't flip the one third this time because it's a positive 10. You just raise one third to the 10th power minus five. Okay, so let's do that. This calculator. Okay, so that's gonna be one divided by three equals 0.3333. And then you're gonna raise that little carrot right here. You're gonna raise that to the 10th power and that's an incredibly small number, you see, 0 0.000169. Now you're going to multiply that by 2. And then I'm just following the formula, you're going to subtract 5. And that gives us negative 4.99999. So you see what's happening here. As I put a really big number here, it's getting very close to negative 5. Okay, if I did this to the 100th power, it would be 4.99999. It'll never make it to negative 5. What does that mean about negative 5? It's an asymptote. No matter how big these positive numbers get, as you go towards infinity in this direction, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, a million, 10 billion, infinity, that these get closer and closer to 5. So if I were to sketch this, it would look something like this. I'll just do a really light sketch. You don't have to sketch it. <clears throat> but it's gonna look like this. As you go in the negative direction, x, these numbers become bigger and bigger and bigger. We said this was 118,000. So it's gonna go up here. First of all, what's zero gonna be? At x equals zero, f of x is negative three. So it's gonna be, let's just say that's negative three on the y-axis. We know that one point right there. Zero goes to negative three. So there's negative three. And then as you go in the negative direction, these numbers get bigger over here. So it goes like this. As you go in the positive direction of x in this direction, these numbers get closer and closer to negative 5. So let's say that this is negative 5 down here. That's going to be an asymptote. And so this is going to come down like this. And it's going to go right along there, but it's never going to touch. It's never going to touch, okay? So the asymptote is at negative 5. So what's the range, what's the domain? What values can X take on? What values, these can take on anything. They can go from positive to negative infinity. There's no limit as to what numbers you can put into this function. So that means the way you would write that is domain. So what I'm writing now is the, I'm answering the question that they asked. Domain is the X values, and that can go from negative infinity. Remember we said that's called a lazy eight is less than the value of x, which is less than positive infinity, which, mean, which means that x is somewhere between negative infinity and positive infinity, which means it could be any number at all. It could be any number. The range, that's the y values, we see that they can't go below negative 5. We're talking about in this direction. This line never goes below negative 5 right here on the y-axis. So that means negative 5 is the lowest number it could possibly be. That's going to be less than whatever value of y you can get. And that's going to be less than positive infinity. So in other words, y in this direction starts at negative 5. It can't be below negative 5. And it can be anything above negative 5. It can go up from there. So this line as it keeps going up and up and up goes towards positive infinity. So this is the answer to the question. 
If you don't feel comfortable with this notation, you can just write it out in words, okay? Y cannot be less than negative 5, but it can go all the way up to positive infinity. Be sure you say positive infinity, okay? Because there is a negative infinity. All right, so that's how you do that type of problem. So just study that before you get to the test question. Okay, the next problem asks us to describe the transformation from a standard exponential uh, to a transformed version of this graph. It says you don't have to graph it, but I'm going to graph it for your, for your review. I would like you to do that. So what does the graph of any exponential like this look like? It comes along the x-axis. It's asymptotic. That means it's an asymptote. It never touches it. And then it comes up and it goes through the point 0, 1. x equals 0, y equals 1. Why is that? Because for any number, no matter what that number is, if you raise it to the 0 power, that's going to equal 1. So x, 0, y, uh, y equals 1. Um, is going to be at that point no matter what this number is. What will differ is how wide the curve goes but that's not relevant. It goes through 0, 1 and then the curve continues up like this. Okay. Alright so that's what this would look like. This is f of x right here. Okay they want you to describe what this is going to do. So what does this do? Let's come down and write it out here. Okay this shifts graph horizontally and I'll just draw you an arrow so you don't forget what that means that means this way and I'm going to put in parentheses the word reverse what I mean by that it goes in the direction, the opposite direction of what you would think it would go. So a minus one, you would think it would shift. It's going to shift it this way. You'd think minus one would shift it that way, but that's not true. It shifts it to the right. It shifts it in the positive direction. So if that's a negative sign, it shifts to the right. I'm going to go ahead and write that. Negative one shift one to the right. So this is going to go over by whatever the units are down here of 1. So that means it's going to shift the whole thing. It's going to shift the whole thing over to here. Like that, okay? And that's 1. That's a 1 right there. So the negative shifts it to the right. If that had been a positive, it would have shifted it backwards to the left. It's the opposite of what you would think it is. This shifts, I can squeeze it in here, shifts vertically, which means up and down. And it actually shifts in the direction that it's, you think it would shift. Positive means up. So you're going to shift it over like this, and then you're going to shift it up by two. Okay, and that's going to make the whole thing, including this part that's right along. Notice that this part stayed along the x-axis when we shifted to the right. But now we're shifting up. This is now going to come up here. And it's going to come like this. So if you did the two of them together, it would look like that. Okay, so this is really all they're asking for is a description. So it shifts vertically up by... Two. So what I squeezed in here is really the answer. They're asking for a description. Okay, so this shifts horizontally. Negative one shifts one to the right. That's really the answer for that. And positive two shifts up by two. That's really the answer for that. Okay, so that's the answer they're looking for. A description of which way it will shift and how much. All right, so that's the answer. This is what I have circled here and what I have circled right there are the answers to the question. Okay, number six. Uh, 81 raised to the x power equals three. You're trying to figure out what x is. Let me show you the way that always works. Um, and then I'll show you the way you should do this problem, okay? I like to always teach a way that always works, and then, but I'll, then I'll show you the best way to do this problem, which is different. 
So what this would be is you can do is you can take this and just take the log of both sides. Anything you do to one side you can do to the other. All right, the principle on our sheet. So number 12, we use this quite a bit. If you have an uh, any kind of exponent within a log, some number raised to an exponent, it doesn't have to just be an X, it could be anything. You can pull that exponent out in front of the log like you do right here, okay? So we're gonna do that here. Okay, now just get out your calculator and compute log of 81 and log of three. So right here on the calculator, okay, there's log, and I'm gonna do 81. Close the parenthesis and I get 1.91. Again, however many decimal places you wanna go, but three numbers is, is good enough. Okay, and that's an X out there, and this is gonna equal log three. I'll just do that here off to the side. And that's gonna be 0 0.477. So now it's just an algebra problem. Divide both sides by 1.91. This cancels and you have x equals 0.477 divided by 1.91. And we're rounding numbers so it's a slightly inaccurate answer, but it's close enough. It's 0 0.249, I'm gonna call it 25. So that's the value of X. So you can go back and plug it in here, and I'll do that, 81. Raised to the 0.25 power, that's what we got for X. And that's gonna equal three, and that's what we have there. So 81 raised to the 0.25 gives you 3. Now that was a little messy with all the decimal numbers. Let me show you the better way to do it. And this is the way you, you could do either way on the test. But this is the better way. You have a common base here. Okay, 3 raised to the first power is 3. 3 raised to the fourth power is 81. So in order to use this next method, you had to be able to recognize that these were common. This is a common base problem. So I'm going to come over here and I'll rewrite the problem a second time. And now I'm gonna rewrite 81, not as 81, but as three to the fourth power, because that's what 81 equals. And then that's raised to the x power. So this is 81 to the x power, same as that. This is three to the first power, okay? Rule number four says if we have a base raised to a power, and then you raise that to a power, it's the same as multiplying the two exponents right there. So we're gonna do that right here. That's gonna be three to the four X equals, equals three to the first. Okay, so if three raised to this equals three raised to this, then it must stand to reason that this equals this. They have to be equal. Otherwise that wouldn't be a true statement. That means we can just basically, without using logs, just ignore the threes and pull them out as 4x equals 1. And you divide both sides by 4, and you get x equals 1 fourth, which equals, if you do it on the calculator, 1 divided by 4 equals 0.25 is what we got over here. Okay, so you get the same answer. Notice you didn't have to use logs over there but you did have to recognize the common base situation. I don't care which of these ways you do it, they're both acceptable. Okay, let us, I tell you what, I'm gonna wrap this video right now. We're only into problem six, there's 14 to do, but it's over 30 minutes. I don't like videos to be much more than 30 minutes. So I'm gonna wrap this up. It'll be up for you to uh, look at and to use uh, to do your this assignment. So I'm doing every problem and remember, the test review is an assignment. You need to turn it in. It is an assignment. But it, what its real value is, it's going to help you do well on the test because all the problems are exactly the same. Problem number six looks exactly like this except with different numbers. And it is a common base type problem as well. Okay? So, okay, I'll see you on the uh, next video for problem seven.